Welcome back, I'm Alaric Taylor and you join us once again in the Adaptive and Responsive Nanomaterials Lab at University College London. As we discussed in our last video, the Langmuir Blodgett technique requires us to trap either molecules or nanoparticles at the air-water interface. The technique is very sensitive to the composition of the water, which we refer to as the subphase, but also any contaminants that may be floating at the air-water interface, and therefore cleaning constitutes a critical phase in the process. We'll need to clean the trough, which holds the water, the barriers, which compress the floating monolayer, the Wilhelmi plate, which measures the surface pressure of particles or molecules at the air-water interface, and the water surface. For this, we will need deionized water, a fully rinsable detergent solution, for example Alconox or Decon 90, pure ethanol, surfactant-free tissues such as these Kim wipes, a butane or propane flame, compressed air or nitrogen, and an aspirator. I like to start by cleaning the trough and then the barriers. Gently wipe down the surfaces with your detergent solution until it foams. Then rinse off the detergent solution using deionized water and a nitrogen gun. Repeat this rinsing sequence several times. Next, wet the surface of your trough with a small quantity of pure ethanol. Then repeat the water nitrogen rinsing process one or two more times. Replace the trough and then perform the same washing process with each of the barriers. Place them directly onto the clean trough once finished. Ensure your barriers are in the closed position, then fill your trough with deionized water until the water subface is level with the edges of the trough. The water interface trapped between your barriers is now isolated. Next, we need to clean our Wilhelmi probe. I use a platinum plate when I'm working with polymeric nanoparticles or organic molecules. Platinum probes are easy to work with. To clean, we can heat them up using our flame torch in order to fully decompose any organic material that may be left over from a previous experiment. However, when I work with inorganic materials such as silica or gold, I choose a paper Wilhelmi probe. I like to pre-soak my paper Wilhelmi probes in deionized water. Paper probes need to be regularly replaced, but they're not expensive and can give very accurate measurements of the surface tension. After cleaning, we mount our probe perpendicular to the barriers. Finally, we need to clean the water's surface. We will do this with an aspirator, and this is essentially vacuuming. We begin by assuming our water surface is uncontaminated. First, open the barriers fully, and then zero the balance so our surface pressure reads zero. Then run a compression isotherm which continuously monitors the surface pressure whilst compressing the barriers to their full extent. If our assumption that the water surface is not contaminated is correct, then we should see no change in surface pressure over the course of a compression sequence. However, as we've discovered here, the surface pressure did increase. This results from us confining contaminant molecules and particles that are already floating at the air-water interface. With the barriers fully closed, we can suck up these contaminants. When aspirating, listen out for a gurgling sound that tells you the tip of your aspirator is at the air-water interface and not sucking up the bulk subphase. We then repeat the process again. We expand the barriers, zero the surface pressure reading and perform an isotherm to evaluate the level to which our water surface is contaminated. In general, we are satisfied by the cleanliness of the interface when the change in surface pressure over a full compression cycle is below 0.3 mN per meter. This value also defines our degree of uncertainty over the measured surface pressure during our experiments, so it's worth taking a note of. If you are unable to satisfactorily reduce the change in surface pressure over the course of three to five compression and aspiration sequences, I'd recommend revisiting the trough, barrier and plate cleaning methods previously outlined. So, we've looked in detail at the process of preparing our Langmuir trough for an experiment or deposition. In our next videos, we'll be doing the fun stuff, spreading nanomaterials as a monolayer at the air-water interface, compressing them and depositing them. See you there.